have to. So much confliction. Fine. I gotta do the review. Hello everybody, Tyrone the God 3 here, and welcome to Dragon Ball Super Review Episode 66 Showdown, The Unyielding Warriors, Miraculous Superpower. I feel like Zamasu in this episode right now. Merge Zamasu, like half of me. There's there's a half deal going. There's a, there's a good half and then there's an ugly half. This episode was great, action-wise. It's the most... I'll go on record to say this is probably one of the most action-packed Dragon Ball. Not just Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, Dragon Ball Kai, Dragon Ball Super. This is the most action-packed Dragon Ball episode ever to me. Like, the fights were really cool looking, and the music that was used, like, we even got that one song, uh, I think it's called Reviving of Majin Buu, it's the uh, song that's used in Dragon Ball Kai when Goku and Vegeta fought. Good music, good spectacles, awesome action, just top-notch animation, but it's sloppy! Oh, remember when I talked about the one episode where a couple episodes back where I said it was sloppy? The word Trunks used the Mafuba on Zamasu, that episode. When I said that that episode was sloppy. This episode was like trying to clean up that mess by making more of a mess. All you were doing, all they did was just swish the mess around on the kitchen floor and now it's messier than it previously was. It is now a bigger mess than it was before. And now you can't clean it up because it's too messy. It looks good. So it's a cool looking mess, but it's still a mess. Oh boy, let's get started. Um, The episode begins where the last one left off with Goku having a beam struggle against Merge Zamasu. Goku uses the power of Shonen to burst his Kamehameha through even though Vegeta and Trunks combined had to work together in order for them to win their beam struggle which kind of is like a hey no matter how cool you are Vegeta Goku will always be one step ahead of you and I it, like I never really felt like, obviously that's a motif of the, the series, not just the show, but the entire franchise that's been a mo motif. But it wasn't really so more exemplified until that moment, where I saw Goku win that beam struggle, struggle single-handedly, whereas it took Vegeta and Trunks to win a beam struggle against Zamasu. And in that beam struggle, they didn't even damage Zamasu. They just pissed them off. This beam struggle damaged Zamasu because half of him died, the black half. I know that sounds really weird saying it out of context, but the black Goku half died. And I think the reason we know that the black Goku half died is because half of his entire body is decayed now. Like, it's decayed. It's a mortal body, but he, can still, he still has access to the powers of it. But then, like, and I'll save this for the last part, but th there's a whole mess of things that don't make sense here. This was just one of them. So then while that's happening, he ends up, oh, Goku actually does end up using the red, uh, Kyo, the Kaioken times, uh, blue. Or, yeah, I just call it Kaioken blue. Goku ends up using Kaioken blue, and then he ends up getting his ass whooped, though. No, actually, he gets a good hit in, but then he ends up getting his ass whooped later when Zamasu, uh, shows off more power and grows and, like, gets stronger because he's embracing all of the, the that two halves. So they, they go through that, and when they go through that, uh, Goku's like, yo, there's only one option we got, and that is us, we have to fuse Vegeta. So, Goku takes Supreme Kai's Fatara earrings, and when Goku asks about the so we'll be fused forever deal, Gawasu states only characters that aren't Supreme Kai's can, uh, will stay fused for an hour. So, if you're a Supreme Kai, you, and you fuse, you fuse forever. If you're not, then it, it's a one-hour temporary, immediately eliminating the rule that's been set for God knows how long. And I know that what they're thinking is slick, because it's like, oh, we finally got an answer to why Goku and Vegeta fuse. No, 
I accepted more the fact that Boo's toxins in his body is what caused Goku and Vegeta to defuse. I would accept that a lot more than a, oh, let's pull this out of our asses at last minute deal. Ugh, I, no, not a fan. Not a fan of that. Because then that immediately eliminates several rules that have been placed. And no, I, I don't. Because Kabito isn't a Supreme Kai. And he fused with the Supreme Kai. So are you telling me that just because Supreme Kai was the person that was used in the fusion, the fusion can't dissolve? Because Kabito Kai isn't a Kai. Like, well, he isn't a Supreme Kai. So that isn't, like, the rules still messy. Like, you tried to clean up your mess by making more of a mess. Now, if two Supreme Kais, like, if Supreme Kai and Zamasu were to fuse, then the rules will be set in stone because they're both Kais. And technically, um, Zamasu and Black aren't even Kais. They're Kai apprentices. So, again, so, yeah, just too messy. Then we get our fight with Vegito versus Zamasu. The uh, best fight, one of the greatest fights. It was a really beautiful looking fight. And the final Kamehameha is, is canon now. It's no longer uh, restricted to video games. It's actually canon. Which I thought was really cool. And yeah, this fight was beautiful looking. It was short, but it was beautiful looking. Like you could see like the flurries of key dashing everywhere when they're fighting. And it was actually a fight where Vegeta was having difficulty. Because when normally when fusion characters come out, they one-shot the opponent, or we get a go tank situation where they just play around. This was a legit fight. Like they act, like Vegito actually had a hard time fighting, which I was really proud of. I liked the fact that they were fighting on more or less even terms. Vegito was winning, but he wasn't winning. Like he wasn't. It wasn't like Super Boo, where he just curb stomped Buhan with no real efforts and was beating him up as a cough drop. Ugh. So, yeah, good fight, really good fight, but because of that stupid one hour time limit, which, this is what makes me even more angry, Goku and Vegeta end up defusing, even though an hour hasn't passed, apparently since they tried to sustain Super Saiyan Blue, they ended up defusing, even though they fused together when they were at normal state, so it should be easy for Vegito to maintain the power, because he was at normal state first. It'd be different if they both fused at Super Saiyan Blue, because then that'd be too strenuous. Supreme God warned them about that way back. But this isn't... Uh, uh. But, so again, fusion still holds the numbers for most useless thing to ever be done in Dragon Ball, because... Again, it just, it showed up, and just as it showed up, bye-bye, it disappeared. Gogeta's the only fusion that's killed someone, and it was in a movie, and it only took 30 seconds. But other than that, canon-wise, fusions still remain useless. And a lot of people are going to come at me and go, oh, well, this, this and this, they weren't useless, it was just a thing that backfired. No, a thing that backfires is something that happens character-wise. Like, for example... Krillin having the remote control to destroy 17, 18, and 16 that he could have used, but his character, the character that fell in love with Android 18, caused him to have an internal conflict with himself, which made the plan not work. Vegito's ego made him allow Cell to fuse with Android, or to absorb Android 18 so he can have a challenge with his newfound powers because Vegito was still e very egotistical. That's a character choice. This wasn't a character choice. This was a, we don't want the saga to end this way choice. So yeah, I still have a, it still holds true that this is useless. Then Trunk shows up and when Trunk shows up, he fights with everything he's got. He actually gets the sword from Moko, the little girl, and or Mikey, Maiku, Maiko, whatever her name is. She, he's got the sword, but it's a broken, his sword is broken, but what he ends up doing is transferring his energy to the sword to make, like, an energy lightsaber thing. Now, I can believe that one only because in a, in a, in a series where people can literally make swords out of their hands, using a, a held item, kind of like uh, Kuwabar's spirit sword, didn't, when he first had it, doesn't surprise me. That doesn't surprise me. What did surprise me, however, is that Trunks was able to just absorb the human's energy into his sword and to make a super giant ultra sword. 
and then he's hacking away at Zamasu. And for some reason, the very job that Vegito couldn't do, Trunks could do. And it was just, and it was just like every moment was just WTF. Just what the fuck? Trunks just somehow has the power to absorb every human's energy. We haven't even gotten an explanation for his Super Saiyan. Uh, it looks cool. Just roll with it for him. So it's just, it's just nonsense on nonsense now. And then he chops Zamasu in half, and that's basically where the episode ends. My problem with Zamasu getting cut in half is, okay, you killed his dead half, but Zamasu, the, the second part of him, is still immortal. Should there be, like, I don't know, half a Zamasu still walking around or something? The immortality wish couldn't have been canceled out. It's just, it's so much. It's so messy. It's so, I'll probably just make a follow-up video trying to compel my thoughts on this and I will do my saga reviews of this entire saga but as of now this episode was really cool action wise really beautiful shown in action wise really action packed it was just messy so with that said I'll see you all then everybody Tyrone the guy three out not saying it was a horrible episode just a very really messy one so see you guys